Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today is going to be a quick video that will hopefully be helpful for you guys. It is, I have picked my four favorite daily planners that I have ever used or reviewed myself. So I have Inkwell Press Daily, Day Designer. This is Day Designer 2018 calendar year. Emily Lay, I, she is about to launch and I did not buy one in 2018. So this is my 2017 Emily Lay. She changed very little though between the 2017 and 2018. And then I have the She Plans, which is a new favorite of mine, 2018 um, daily. So we're going to talk about these, go through them each real quickly. I'm going to show you the layout in each and tell you the pros and cons that I have with each one. If you follow me, you know that I have always used a weekly planner plus a daily planner. Sometimes my daily planner is only like a notebook or a spiral type of thing, or I have used Erin Condren monthly deluxe as a daily planner. Um, so, and I actually have a video coming out about that soon, but as far as a daily planner goes these are my favorite dailies that I have ever used or reviewed and I will tell you guys why okay let's start with Emily Lay so she is about to launch her uh, academic year 2018 2019 planners this is a calendar year 2017 2018 was the first year that I did not buy an Emily Lay um, after three consecutive years of use. So I used her for 2015, 2016, and 2017. And I have always bought calendar years because I'm a calendar year gal until I started this channel. Um, because now you guys know her big covers and her big exciting launch is for her academic year. And so I'm going to buy the academic year this year to review for you guys. And there's one big reason why I'm going to buy it. And I, I don't have any points or credit or anything with her. I'm, I'm going to buy it because I really want to see if the paper has improved, if I really got um, paper that was a dud. So in my previous Emily Lay videos, I've always said, so this was my third year to buy her and use her. I love everything about her planner. Well, except I wish it was undated. We'll talk about that. Because for the way I use dailies, I would always prefer undated. But um, the one thing about her planner that is a con to me is her paper has always ghosted for me. And she uses great paper. It feels really thick. It feels amazing. It feels great to write on. And it's great 80-pound Mohawk via paper. But it ghosts for me. And this was a 2017, and many people told me I must have gotten a batch with bad paper because theirs doesn't do that. And so I was still kind of turned off and didn't buy it in 2018 because I was using so many other things. And so I really want to rebuy it for this one for the 2019 launch because I want to test, pen test the paper for you guys and compare it. So in my other Emily Lay detailed videos, I have shown you how I get a lot of ghosting. And so it makes me feel when I turn to a page that it doesn't feel fresh and brand new. This was a Le Pen, which used to be Emily Lay's favorite pen to use in her planner until she started loving the Pilot Precise, which I love Pilot Precise V5s too. Love them. Um, so, but this used to be her favorite pen and the one she recommended for her planner when I had this one. And it goes really badly. And so I'm just wondering if I did get a bad batch of paper or if no one thinks that this is too much ghosting for the price of the planner. I don't know why this paper ghosts because it feels thick. So it should not do that. But I know every paper is different, even if it's the same pound weight paper is different. Emily Lay is 70 pound Mohawk via paper and that equates to about 104 GSM if you want to know what that equates to. So it is 70 pound but that is still really good paper and should not produce this much ghosting. So I'm hoping that everyone that tells me um, 
that theirs doesn't ghost this much. I'm hoping that my new one won't because for this price of planner, I just don't think you should have that much ghosting. My Erin Condren paper doesn't ghost like this. My Inkwell Press paper, of course, doesn't ghost like this. And even the less weight Day Designer paper doesn't ghost this much. Day Designer is 60 pound, so Emily Lay is 70 pound. Day Designer is 60 pound and her paper doesn't feel nearly as luxurious either. But I will show you that in the Day Designer. So now that we've got the ghosting thing out of the way and I'm gonna see how her new one performs, I wanted to do this video just for those who are trying to decide um, maybe whether they want Emily Lay this year before her launch or another daily planner. So the one thing I love about Emily Lay is her beautiful covers and they do a great job on making fantastic covers every year. They are beautiful. Unfortunately, the way I use my daily planner is it is always turned over to only one day. And so I rarely see my cover, but you do get to see the edges, which is nice. And whatever the inside color is, which for this year is all navy in every, in every print. But I love her covers. I love that her O-rings function seamlessly, no matter what, no matter how much damage. This is my third Emily Lay. I don't have my first two because I hadn't started my channel yet, and I didn't know that I would want to keep those. But um, I had a happy stripe, and then I had a white pineapple. And so I really wish I would have kept those. But I always flip my Emily Lay by grabbing one of these middle rings, and the one I grab always sticks out a little bit more than the others, but it does not mess up the turning. So all year, my Emily Lay is constantly flipped like that when I'm flipping it. And... It does not mess up the O-rings. Everything always flips seamlessly in her O-rings. So I've never had a problem with her O-rings. It must be the way they cut their covers or the O-rings themselves, I'm not sure. But there are only a few companies that I get O-rings from that slide this seamlessly. Um, Emily Lay is one. Get to Workbook is one. I'm trying to think. I think those are the two best O-rings out there that I've ever used. So I love her covers. I love the way the book looks and feels. I, I love the happy colors of the tabs and everything. That makes me happy. I like how she's taken the quote off the page now and she has taken off this line for this year. And so this doesn't say anything down here. It's just a big blank box. I love that. I say, I'm going with her when she says we want to simplify and leave the whole page for you. I love that. So there's no quotes anymore. There's no line here. It's just a big blank space. So you just have my day, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then you have your to-do list with tick boxes. And that is it. And I love that. The one thing I don't like besides the ghosting that I've had, which we don't know if that's going to show up this year or not. But the one thing I don't like is Saturday and Sunday on the same page. My Saturdays and Sundays are generally as full, just in different ways, but just as full as my weekdays. I need a full Saturday and Sunday. I usually always have to end up going to use something else for these days, like a tablet or a little spiral notebook, because this just is not enough room for me. And one thing I really wish they would take off is the weekly prep tasks. So she puts weekly prep tasks in here. They're the same ones printed every Sunday. And I took a survey up in my Instagram stories and a way bigger number. I think it was like 75% said, yes, take it away. And 25% said, no, keep it. So some people love this, but plan meals for the week ahead, tidy up for a clean slate on Monday, write task appointments for the week, fill your tank and enjoy what matters most. I just think that takes up way too much of my Sunday, especially since Sunday is only this tiny space. And that takes up a huge thing. I am not someone who needs to follow those exact same tasks. And even if I did, I could write them in or that's just kind of something that I would know to do every Sunday. I just don't like her telling me which tasks I need to do every Sunday and having them pre-printed in. To me, that goes away from what they're saying of leaving the page as blank as possible for us to use however we need to for our life. So. That is just 
And that's going away from their thoughts on simplicity to me. And I know she's explained why they can't do Saturday and Sunday on separate pages. And it's going to make the book too thick. And, um, and everything in the week always ends here with Saturday and Sunday. And then Monday is always on your left. But you know what? I would be fine with changing that up with Monday not always being on your left. Because I really need a full Saturday and Sunday. I also wish that they could add um, at least one note page per month. One note page. I mean, I would really love one note page per week, but I know I'm not going to get that. I would love a note page in the front of every week. But that is also a reason why I actually prefer my daily planners. And they say that would make it too thick and heavy because it's already big. This is one of the more portable daily planners. It does not feel really heavy despite how thick it is. It still feels very portable. And so that's one of the reasons why I actually love a daily planner that is a six-month daily planner. I wouldn't mind having to buy it twice a year because you could add those note pages in. And there is not one note page in this planner. They do sell little notebooks you can slip in the pocket. Emily, <clears throat> Emily Lay sells them at Simplify. So you can slip a notebook in there. So that is an option. But um, other than those things, I have loved my three simplified planners. I love Emily's mission with her company. I love how involved she always is on social and how excited she gets everyone for launch and all the new cool products that they always bring to us. I just love her company's excitement um, to constantly bring us new and exciting things, fun covers, I love her involvement, her honesty, her putting her real life out there. So I, a lot of that um, just is a reason why I love the Simplified Planner too. So, okay. <laughs> but I want to show you a new favorite daily to me this year. This doesn't start until July. It's from She Plans. And it is a six-month daily planner. Okay. So you don't get um, your whole year at once. You have to buy two, but it's, uh, I believe she gives you a discount if you buy two at once. Cannot remember. And with She Plans, you can also pick a hard cover with the O-rings or you can pick a soft cover with a spiral. So that looks more like um, an Erin Condren. So you get to choose because some people really prefer one cover over the other. Actually, these O-rings, I haven't gotten to use this planner but from just from my reviews, they have actually functioned seamlessly. So there you go. This is another set of O-rings that has functioned seamlessly. Um, she Plans has, let me look at my paper chart. Um, this has 80 pound paper. So this paper is actually thicker than Emily Lay. And that shows in it. It does not ghost. This is amazing paper. It feels amazing. So this is 80 pound paper. Emily Lay is 70 pound Mohawk Via. So she plans her academic year starts in July and goes through December. What she gives you in here is you have some goal planning room here. Focus goal one, two, and three for your quarter three. And you get some pages for dreams and plans in your quarter four goals because this planner is only for quarter three and quarter four. You get your six months at a glance. You get holidays in here. And then you have your monthlies for 2019. This is really awesome because this is only a six-month planner for July through December of 2018. You get six months worth of 2019s in here to plan ahead while you're in this planner so that when you switch over, it will be seamless. If you need to go and schedule events, you get all the way January through June of monthlies right here in a row in the front through 2019. I think that is awesome. That is an awesome feature. I love that this page is a little bit bigger than Emily Lay, and yet it does not feel any heavier, even though it has a lot of extra pages in it and you have notes, because it's only a six month. So it actually feels like less. I love the clean aesthetic. Um, look of she plans and I love that she has thick amazing paper um, I did a pen test back here 
I did not do a blue, so let's do that. This is a Pilot G207. And you can tell, you can hardly see anything else on there coming through, hardly any ghosting. This is her 80 pound paper, like I said, and Emily Lay has 70 pound. So you can tell this paper is thicker. Um, it is a different paper though. It is not Mohawk Via like Emily Lay. So each paper has its own feel, but I really like this paper and the way that pen takes to it and the way that you do not have that extreme ghosting right there. When you turn to a new page, you still feel like you have a fresh start because you can't see everything from the day before. Um, I definitely plan to try out this planner when it starts in July and see how my days flow in my daily planning in it because I really like the design of it. So if you are using this as your only planner, which you guys know I'm not, so I won't be using these pre-planning months, but if I was using this as my only planner and not using a weekly um, for my planning ahead, then this would be just amazing to have. I, I wouldn't say essential because most daily planners don't have this, but it, it is such a good addition. And then you have a notes page on the back of that. And your tabs are just all really understated, khaki colored, and this is how your monthly page looks starting out. And for each new month, you get an entire page to put notes. It's just for revisit your vision, refresh your goals, renew your commitment. You get a focus on your goals page for that month, for July. Then you get the monthly spread, and then you start your daily. Now, she is similar to Emily Lay in that she does split her Saturday Sundays on her page, as many, many dailies do. So Saturday Sunday is split, but her page is different from Emily Lay's and it is bigger. So you have a timed column starting at 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., and you have half hour slots in there too. But I like how the times are really lightly written in a very light font because I don't always use my timed column for times. Sometimes I use them for another list if I have no appointments that day. And so I like that the times are not really bold. Then you have a huge space for your daily list. I like that. It's a larger width for a writing space. And I tend to need to write longer things than just three words. So I like that. And then you have just a blank notes page space. I love how her page is open, how it's not dictating a whole bunch of boxes for you because that's just not my personality, what I need. But I know many people love that. And we will see that in one of the other dailies in Day Designer. We'll see something different. So I just really am excited about trying out this planner when it starts in July because I have not used She Plans before. So Compared to Emily Lay's page, this is how it looks. Emily Lay, you have a much shorter, you know, I can fit like three words in here in my to-do list. You have a 6 a.m. also, but you go till 9 p.m., but there's no half hour slots in there. Your page is just smaller and your note section here is smaller. So it's just a little bit less writing room on your page, but it's actually very similar in the layout. But you definitely have more writing room on this page and better paper in my opinion. So, I mean, it is 10 pounds heavier and it doesn't ghost as much. But you don't have the colors if that matters to you. You don't have all the fun cover choices. So there's a give and take. You have notes pages in this planner. You have goal planning pages in this planner. And you only have six months worth. So there's just, there is a lot of differences. There's a lot to look at there. So at the end of every month, you're going to follow the same pattern. You do get a notes page at the end of every month. And then at the beginning of every month, you get another notes page. So if you want to make like a monthly list on one of these pages, you have room. If you need to make notes about something, you have room. And you have a my focus on my goals for August. You have your monthly spread and that's the way it goes. So it flows very well over your O-rings. And then at the end, you just end right here with one more notes page. You have a pocket folder at the back, double-sided white pocket folder that functions great. You do not have any pockets on the cover, and Emily Lay just has her one pocket on the cover. So those are comparing Sheila, 
up. She plans and your Emily Lay. And now we're going to pull up Day Designer because these three are pretty similar, but they do have some big differences. So we're going to take a look and then I'll show you like three of the pages just to compare with each other. They all share pages on their weekends. So that's something they have in common. Day Designer actually, her size, she has two sizes. So she plans only has one size. It's your typical seven by nine, okay? Emily Lay is a little bit smaller than that. You can find her dimensions on her site. Emily Lay is a little bit smaller than seven by nine. Day Designer is bigger than, bigger than seven by nine and bigger than Emily Lay, but she also has a mini size, which is smaller than Emily Lay and smaller than seven by nine. So here, I will try to give you a look at the size kind of difference here between these. Um, I do not have a mini day designer. So this is Emily Lay, this is day designer. And then she plans, comes in the middle of those, she plans is still, it's smaller than Day Designer. Day Designer is bigger than 7 by 9. And then Emily Lay, if you lay it over, is like that. You can't really tell on here, but that's how much extra room. So the sizes are a little bit different. Day Designer has the two sizes. This is the bigger one that you can choose from. All right, this is called their flagship planner. They have already come out with all their new academic covers for the academic year and released those. So this was one of their um, covers from last year. So they have their new covers for the academic year. Day Designer comes with a nice pocket in here, like Emily Lay, but it's bigger, and gold tabs. And then there is no color in the, in the uh, planner. I did not mention on Emily Lay's, for those not familiar with her, that her days run through a color scheme. So every Monday's navy, every Tuesday is aqua, every Wednesday is a lighter aqua cyan blue, every Thursday is a Kelly green, Friday they have now changed to orange because so many people were complaining they really can't see the date in yellow, and I agree, I love yellow, but it's hard to see your date, and your to-dos and your my day are also written in the color of the day, so that's a pretty cool detail in my opinion. And then, but that's going to be orange in your planner this year. And then your uh, Saturday is pink and your Sunday is hot pink fuchsia. So they use the happy stripe colors, which match the tabs also. But like I said, they had to change the yellow to orange to make it show up better. So whereas she plans doesn't have any colors in it, which leaves it wide open for you to put any colors and day designer doesn't have any colors in it either. So Day Designer, let me make sure on this paper, oh, let me look at my list, is 60 pound paper. So it is the least of these three that we've looked at so far. Day Designer is 60 pound, Emily Lay is 70 pound, and She Plans is 80 pound. But I will tell you, Day Designer, for some weird reason, does not ghost as bad to me as Emily Lay's paper, even though Emily Lay's paper is thicker and feels better. So like I said, that is a 2017 paper from Emily Lay, planner from Emily Lay. And even though they say the paper has not changed since then, I do want to just put that disclaimer on there. I will do a whole new video when I get this new um, academic launch planner from Emily Lay. And I will show you the pin in my 2017 and I will do pin testing in this 2018-19 academic year when I get it. And we will look at all that for sure. I will show you guys that. So any of you that are waiting to buy Emily Lay, I will get that video out as soon as I can um, after I receive my planner from launch. So let me show you some different features in Day Designer. And you will see how even though it's 60 pound paper, look how much I've written on these pages. And on this page, you really can't see much ghosting at all. It's nothing like Emily Lay's. So the pound weight of the paper is not the only thing that determines the way things show on the paper. It is also just something about the type of paper that it is. And even though she uses an amazing Mohawk via paper, I'm not sure why this one is not ghosting as much as hers when this is less in the pound weight. So, but let me show you. Day Designer does Saturday and Sunday vertically, so they are different 
they split since they're a wider page. Um, it works well this way. They split Saturday and Sunday vertically. You get your top three to do's. You have a quote on every page. Your dates are written very small though at the top of the page. So if that's something that bothers you, that's something to think about. You have a quote on every page, whether it's your full day or your Saturday, Sunday. So on your Saturday, Sunday, you just have your top three to do's and then you have your timeline from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Of course, you don't have to use those timeline slots. You can fill in anything you want there. I would just be writing my Saturday to-do list there. If we had any timed stuff, I would write that up top and what time it was. Then this is something that I love to see in daily planners. And that is a Monday through Sunday layout of your next week. So it's like a peek at your next week. So you could scribble little activities or timed appointments, what big things are happening on that day. I think that is a really helpful tool. So when you know you have your page folded over here to your Saturday and Sunday, you can have a peek at your week ahead and see what's coming up. So I really like that. Now I will say their O-rings function really well. Sometimes they get stuck for me, but there's no big problems, really. I think it just seems harder to function them because it's a little bit bigger, heavier planner than the other ones. But it is they, they are functioning really well for me. So I have planned out a few days in this to try it out before, but let me show you a blank, just normal day right here. So you have your date really small, Friday, March the 2nd here, 2018. You have your quote. For every day, you have a today's top three. I really like that, that. But for me, I like less boxes to fill in in general because I just kind of like to organize my day the way I want it to. I like less checkoff boxes. Um, but some people love more boxes to fill in and more organization that way. So it's really just what goes with your personality and your lifestyle the best. It's really just a preference because all of these planners that I'm showing you today are great planners. They're beautiful, they're well-made, they're well thought out. And in my opinion, I could use any of them and be happy they function great as a daily. So it's just personality and personal preference and your lifestyle, how it works with your lifestyle. So they have a do box, a dinner box, a dollars box, and a don't forget box that you can use in any way you want. Of course, dinner, you can scribble in there. Do could be anything that's due that day, or maybe something that must get done. Dollars could be if you want to total the dollars spent that day, or how many dollars do you have to spend that day, or however you're keeping track of a budget. And don't forget, that is a nice one if you have something big about the day to not forget. But if I fill in too many boxes, I tend to not even look at them anymore. That's just the way my brain thinks. I don't know. Um, Less on the page is better for me, but I do like Day Designer having a bigger page. Emily Lay is sometimes too small of a page for me. Um, she plans. I like that it's a bigger page too. So Day Designer, you have 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. There's no half hour slots. Then you have to-dos and you have the tick boxes. I like how there's just two big columns. And if you don't need the timed column, it could be two different lists. Then you have a blank note section and a daily gratitude. I do like how they have a little daily gratitude to prompt you on that, but it's quite tiny for me, and I could probably only fit like one word in here written diagonally, but that's just me. So that is the layout of the Day Designer. The Day Designer does give you a notes page on months that don't end on the tab. So like this month of um, March happened to have it would have been blank here. So they gave you a notes page with three boxes at the top. I like that. But then some of the months, which we haven't looked at the month spread yet. So May gives you a note page too. June, let's see, I need to find one that doesn't. Okay, July doesn't. July, they need the last page here for July. So you didn't get a notes page because they have your last weekend here in July. So see how that works? Some months you get a note page and some months you don't. Then August, you don't get a note page. You know, September, you do. So it just depends on how it falls. You don't have a note page every month. Okay, here is her layout. This is a little bit different than the other two because it's a Monday start to your monthly calendar. So that's something to note. 
You also have a big header section at the top and you have Saturday and Sunday together and it's grayed out with really, really light lines. But I don't want to spend a lot of time going over everything in the planners because I have detailed videos of that and I have already gone over too much and gone on too long. I kind of just wanted to give you a highlight of every planner. So you have a few note pages in here and you have one note page at the end and that's it. No other pocket at the back and that is your day designer. Okay, now let's look at Inkwell Press. Inkwell Press is completely different. Number one, it does not come with a coil. The Inkwell Press Daily, they have no choice of a coil this year. Also, this book only covers six months and it is undated. I actually love an undated daily because it gives me flexibility and if you don't use it all up that year, you can use it anytime. I, I love an undated daily because I use a weekly and I don't plan ahead in my daily, but I can understand if you plan ahead in your daily, if it is your only planner, then this will probably not work for you. There are no monthly calendar spreads in here. So let me show it to you. It is a really compact book. And if you use it every single day, there's enough for you to have a full page um, of planning for six months if you used it every single day. So if there's some days you're not using it or some weekends or vacation days or holidays you don't use it, or if this is something you use only at the office five days a week, then it's going to last you longer than six months. So you have an important date section at the front. You can use those 12 boxes however you want. You do have a goals section, and I'm not going to go into all this and the goals and the checkpoints because I have a detailed video, and I will put that in the description box. I use this planner for several months. So I'm just gonna flip through some of my pages and let you see what it looks like. I love Inkwell Press because this is 140 GSM paper, which is pretty much amazing paper. It equates, that would be about 95 pound paper if you're trying to turn it into pounds. So it blows the other planners out of the park, to be honest. You will not have anything ever goes through in this planner, okay? You can use, you know, flare pens. You can use markers. Now, not a Sharpie marker, but nothing shows through in this planner. Okay, I want to show you a blank page and show you how it's laid out. I actually love this planner, and I do really wish it came in a uh, O-ring or spiral bound because I only need to see one day at a time for a daily. And so it's a big waste of space on my desk or my table where I'm sitting for me to have this open because I just don't need to see two days at a time. So it's taking up double the space. Um, I used it for a long time though. I got over that because I loved it so much. But I really hope she does it in a spiral bound next year. So you have room to write in your date since it's undated. You circle your day of the week. You write your focus for the day. I really like that because it could also be the one thing you don't want to forget for the day, or it could be a focus or a goal for the day. Then you have your to-dos divided into three categories, which I absolutely love. And she talks about this in one of her podcast episodes. Tanya Dalton, the owner of Inkwell Press, has a podcast called Productivity Paradox. And I have really enjoyed a lot of those episodes and learned a lot. And she talks about why your task should be divided like this, immediate, important, and insignificant. And I can't go into that today, but there is more to it than you would think. So if you want to know more about that, you can check out her podcast. And then you have, and I really like dividing my tasks that way too, by the way, this worked really well for me. You have a schedule 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., but she divides it. In the middle, you see that little space so that if you have half hour appointments, they go on this side. So that's genius. You have a notes box. You have a today's accomplishment, which I use sometimes and sometimes I didn't use. I don't mind these extra boxes being at the bottom because sometimes I used them and other times I didn't. But it was nice that they were at the very bottom and they weren't crowding up any other part of my page. A scorecard for the day for whatever you're scoring. It could be, you know, all different things. And three boxes down here, which sometimes I wrote in my weather. Sometimes I wrote in my what I did for fitness that day. So you can use these boxes for weather, for fitness, for dinner, maybe. 
Um, so I actually think those are pretty useful because they're not labeled and they can be whatever you want to make them. So I also love that. Love the versatility of it. This paper, you will never write on better planner paper. This is 140 GSM. Nothing shows through. It feels luxurious to write on. Then you have some checkpoints throughout here. These are the mission boards that she has in her normal weekly planners. So she has um, stuck some of those mission boards in here. Let me find one that I haven't written on. And so you can do a checkpoint with your goals or take some notes if you need to throughout um, for the month. And here's another checkpoint. So your checkpoint is coordinates back to your goals at the front. They're labeled me time, home, be social, financial, health, dream big, and then you have some free ones. But you can use those um, for anything that you need. You don't have to go with her little headings. They're so tiny. Many times I've used those in my weekly planner from Inkwell Press and I don't go with her headings. Then you have a big space for plan, focus, and notes. I love having this notes page in the middle. Every so often you have the checkpoint. So you can mark that with a paper clip or a little magnet page marker so you can find which one you're on easily. So you do have those notes pages put throughout. And then, sorry you guys, I tore out a page of the habit tracker here. I forgot. My nine-year-old wanted this habit tracker page um, to use. So, okay, there was another checkpoint at the end and then the page turned over and there's a page of habit trackers starting here. So there's two full pages of habit trackers. Yeah. And um, so that gives you 18, 18, yeah, because there's nine on each page. So that gives you 18 habit trackers for your six months in here. You label the habit you want to track and or label the month that you're tracking that habit. Like it might be the gym for, you know, May. And so you label gym for May and you color in or you X out or you do whatever symbol you want to mark off. And it's really nice to see a habit tracked for a 30 day period. Actually, they only did these for 28 days. And I'm not sure why, but I'm thinking it's because they couldn't fit as many on the page. If they went up to the 30 or 31 days, then you wouldn't be able to fit the nine on the page. But um, nonetheless, having those habit trackers in the back is really great. And I love how it's undated. I stopped using it, but I do not feel bad because I know I can come back to it anytime I want. Now, one thing is I'm not a huge fan of always having the same subdued color all throughout. I kind of get tired of it. If it's going to be one color all throughout, I kind of would rather it just be the black and white. Beautiful, clean aesthetic. So Inkwell Press lays completely flat. Completely. Their book binding is really unique. If you want to know more about the book binding and the cover, check out the detailed review video down below that I will link up that I have. But it's lays flatter than any book possible because of their special binding. It is amazing. I can totally see this working really well also in an office corporate situation because it is very, you know, subdued. It's not flashy with bright colors and it looks very professional in my opinion. So, and also with it being undated, like I said, just having weekdays, it would be absolutely perfect for that. Okay, guys. So those are my four top picks for daily planners. They really are my favorites out of all the dailies that I have reviewed. So we have Day Designer, we have Inkwell Press, we have She Plans, and Emily Lay. And those truly are my favorite out of all the daily planners that I have reviewed. Now, while I was doing this video though, I did think of one planner which um, has some really good qualities and is really close to um, these planners in a lot of ways. But to me, it's just not my favorite as much as those. But I wanted to go ahead and mention it before we're done with this video because the layout of the page is quite similar. And some of you guys might really like it. It has a soft cover. Okay. It's Kit Life. And this is the Kit Life Daily Planner. Their tabs are all clear. 
and they give you some info for every month trying to kind of give you challenges and um, suggestions for that month. And so you have clear tabs and each month is a different color, but it doesn't um, go 12 colors, it rotates. So let me show you, like February is um, the orangey yellow and then, um, sorry, January was the yellow, February is pink, March is green, April is orange, because January was the yellow, May is purple, and then June is a blue, and then July starts back over in the yellow. So you have six different colors, and then it rotates through each of them twice. And let me tell you what I love about this planner that's different. Um, okay, and you do have quarterly check-ins. In between each month, you have a doodle break page, which could be used for a notes page. This is what your monthly layout looks like. It's a Sunday start, okay? And here is what your monthly pages look like. My favorite thing about this planner is that you have a huge section for just your to-do list for the day, for just for notes. I played around with this and used this for several days. And that was my favorite thing about this planner is a huge section of to-do list and that it's at the top. Then you have times from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., no half hours. Then the big three, that didn't really work for me because it wasn't at the top, but that's just how my head works. I love things that have the big three, but like I would need it up here. It's dated. You have your date and your day written up here. You have a wellness box if you, if you want to keep track of fitness or maybe your nutrition. And you have a gratitude box, which is bigger than Day Designer, which I actually think I could fit a gratitude in. Then you have a quote on each page, but it's at the bottom. And I like that much better than taking up real estate at the top because it's really hard to write at the very bottom of a page neatly. And so I really love how they've put that at the bottom right there. Like I said, as I was reviewing those other dailies, this one came into my mind. And like I said, the favorite thing about it to me is the big to-do list at the top. And so there is a lot to like about this planner. It feels very hefty. It feels very thick because it has a lot of extra pages in it. Um, and without a hard cover, it does kind of feel, feels very floppy to me. I really wish um, with this many pages it had a hard cover. That's just my personal opinion. It does have some goal planning and some looking ahead and stuff like that in the beginning of here too. I will link this detailed video down below for you guys, but there is a lot to love about the kit life because their day page is very different than the other ones. And I'm going to show you this ingenious thing about Saturday and Sunday. Now I don't love Saturday and Sunday being split, but what I do love about it is they give you a peek at the week ahead, but it's even bigger than Day Designer, and it is not like at the bottom, which is hard to write on. I actually love their design of the peek at the week ahead. I love this, how I can see what's going on next week and fill that in while I am finishing up Saturday and Sunday. So although this is not a lot of room for Saturday and Sunday for me, the peek at the week ahead almost makes up for it, in my opinion, for me with the way I plan. But like I always say, it's totally, you know, it, not one of these planners is better than the other. It's really which one works better for you and makes you happier while using it. So Kit Life is a really good um, alternative that's maybe not as popular um, and you may not have heard of, but I hope that you will check out the video if you're interested in it then because just pulling it out reminded me of how much I enjoyed the, the time that I planned in here for a few days. Here's your peek at the week ahead. I loved filling that out and seeing my appointments right here and just kind of getting in my head what is next week going to look like. I really liked that. And, you know, my Saturday and Sunday did fill up pretty good there. And my other days, I just love how mostly my daily planner is for my to-dos. And so it gives you the biggest space up here with two columns for your to-dos and my timed appointments is a smaller space, which that's kind of what I need. And I use it for other notes when I don't need it for timed appointments. I just put notes in there. And I tried to use the big three because I really like having that. But like I said, my mind just kept going up to my list first and not looking down here. 
it's just probably something I'd have to train myself. So if I used this planner all the time, I would definitely just have to train myself to look at those big three. And I'm sure I could get that in my brain. But so they have a really interesting, unique page layout, in my opinion. And um, I enjoyed my time in here. And I'll probably come back now that I've reminded myself of it today and play around in here for a couple more days because um, I did enjoy that. I don't enjoy all the colors they chose. Like I kind of get sick of looking at orange in April. That's just me. Um, but since it changes every month, that's okay. All right, so those are my five top daily planner picks. Thanks for watching you guys and sticking with me. This turned out to be a really long video. Let me know which daily planner you love and you like using and tell me your favorite thing about it down below in the description box. I'd love to hear. All right, happy planning. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.